here on Jefferson Avenue, you know, it's, it's obvious, but I have to say it, this neighborhood is still very much reeling, trying to figure out ways to heal. You might be able to hear the gospel music that is playing. It's coming from about 100 feet away. There are still dozens of people who are gathered. There are organizations that are giving away freebies, just trying to help in whatever way they can. Uh, now I want to bring in Jocelyn Person. Uh, Jocelyn, what happened on Saturday has happened to it in a neighborhood that has already been through so much. Oh yes, so much actually, and you are correct on that. Like this community is hurt badly and it's going to take them a very long time for them to heal. What Cold Springs is, 14208 is to Buffalo, New York. It's like the heart of the city is. <laughs> You have libraries, community centers, you have everything here. So many residents living the zip code 14208 are still mourning the 10 lives lost on Saturday. I asked several people who live in this community to tell me what life was like before this tragedy. Anybody can come outside. Nobody, like, any given day you would come out and you will see people congregating, having conversations, playing on the chessboard, playing checkers, playing basketball. They're giving out free groceries, like free books. Like, this is not a violent community. According to census figures, 80% of the population living in 14208 are black. The median household income is $25,000 and tops with the go-to market for many in this neighborhood. This was like a food desert. You know, we didn't have a grocery store. We just had corner stores, you know, and they didn't have fresh fruits and fresh vegetables. You know, when we was growing up, you know, they had a Bells on East Ferry or we would have to travel all the way to Bells on Summer in um, Elmwood. Other residents living in this zip code tell me that their neighborhood has been torn apart now. It's like he wanted to try to kill as many black people as he could. This community is 99% black. 99% black. The only Caucasians in this community is people that work over here. No Caucasians hang out in this community. No Caucasians interact with us. No Caucasians even go to our grocery store, besides the ones that's worked there. So he targeted this community because he know it was predominantly black. I've even heard, you know, someone on TV say innocent until proven guilty doesn't make sense to me. You know, the proof is in the pudding. You, you came to a community that loves each other, right? You come to a community that respects and looks off one another. You come to a community that's a God-fearing community. But these neighbors tell me they're going to make sure they stand strong and continue to lift up one another. At the end of the day, we gonna be here and it's gonna be us that rebuild this community. I'm not gonna see none of these faces when this is all said and done. Now you can see, you can hear, you can even feel the hurt in J-Dub's voice. Like I said before, it is just going to take a very long time for this community to heal, Ashley. And one of the ways that this healing process will continue is by continuing to hear and share the stories of those victims. Thank yes, you for being your- together as well. That's right, that's right. Yes. And being together as well. Positive vibes. As we